Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how I use the Simply Wall Street app to help me in my strategy of purchasing shares. So the core foundation of my purchase strategy is to buy stocks that have very little debt, very strong revenue and potentially high growth. My area of expertise is in technology, having had a computer science degree. So let's just go in and just give you a sample of the portfolio that I have currently. Enphase stock was a complete flutter and I made no in-depth fundamental analysis of this stock other than the fact that it's in the renewables sector and I was lucky so I'm up 600% on that. Bank of Ireland group, um, living in Ireland, I'm aware there's only two Irish banks and it seems to be a duopoly. A lot of other banks have left the market. So generally I have given, I've seen the potential for the, the stock to grow in that regard. And then in terms of tech, two of my biggest exposures are in Microsoft and also Alphabet. So if we look at Alphabet, for instance, this is a recurring stock that I like. So based on this tool here of Simply Wall Street, the value on an initial overview, the value is very good. The growth potential is reasonable. The health is very good. Dividends, not so good. So that kind of overall green, light green color industry leads me to research a bit further. So as you can see, the general summary, this app believes that it's 27% below fair value. Earnings are forecast to go 12% per year. Reasonable. I like that. Boring but reliable. Analysts in good agreement, the stock will rise by 21%. So the potential for the future is promising. And I generally look at the five year price history. And I'm just generally flicking through, seeing any news articles. And it's all of the variables. Now in the past while, short term, the stock has been in a downward trajectory and I guess the key story here and the current the current times is this whole area of chatbots and the whole area of AI and whether or not Google is strategically placed in regards to that. Now based on my background in computer science my use of the technologies, the applications and the services within Google, Gmail, all of the other products, Google Drive, etc, etc. Factoring in all of the other experience that I've had with this company, I'm betting that it will come out tops in regards to artificial intelligence, chatbots etc etc i feel it has in terms of a story a substantial wealth of data that it can rely on and indeed it was one of the founding technologies of ai in terms of chatbots etc now looking at the green aspects here again it's just a matter of just browsing through and I come now to the main, the first checkpoint that I look at, and that is the net profit margin. As a general rule of thumb, having learned some various strategies from various investors, as a general rule of thumb, if the net profit margin is consistently over 20%, then that indicates a potential moat. That indicates that a company is in an industry with very few competitors. 
that can match it. So if I click on see historical performance, and here we are, if I want to look back, 2007, 21% profit margin, 2018, 11%, 22%, persistently over the past several years in the upper re in the region of 20%. So that's the first indication to me that this company has a durable competitive advantage. And then if I progress back again and I go down and in terms of valuation, so I'm looking at the PE ratio in comparison to the peers. Now, interestingly, Microsoft isn't one of the peers on this. Amazon isn't either, which I would have thought would be the case. But nonetheless, if we look, we can see that the PE is significantly below the competitors. Well, not significantly, in some instances, marginally below. And the earnings grow at 12%, which I suppose is one of the lowest there in that cohort of group. So again, that's a positive indication for me that I like. And then I look again at the P ratio versus the industry. And as you can see there, Google is just about on average. So that's not an indication of uh, good value per se, one variable. And if we go down further, then this app itself has its own formula for calculating a fair PE and it's stating the current PE is significantly less than the fair PE that it's calculating. So again, another positive there. And if it's green, that means that it's a positive aspect of the story. Now looking at the share price again, if we can see here, it's stating that it's 27% undervalued, not a, not a significant amount. But still, nonetheless, it's estimating that the fair value should be $145. Now, I, ideally, I'd like that to be around 50% undervalued. But nonetheless, there we are. And if we look at the analyst expectations of the future price, they're all in agreement that the price will rise in the next 12 months. Now, the purple line here indicates that that is the estimate that they had previously in regards to the um, the price target. Um, so that is that. And if we go down further, as you can see there, the earnings growth. Another aspects there, just looking over, just a brief... For me, I don't go into too much indication. There's just a few variables that I like to watch. And this is also one of them. And that is the earnings per share growth forecast. So again, I'm seeing a nice forecasted incline in the EPS. And that to me is a very strong variable that influences my decision in terms of purchasing. If I go down then to the Future return on equity, again, 24%, which is excellent in comparison to the industry, which is 6.6. .6. And if I go down further again, then, I mean, historically, the growth has been phenomenal, 29%. That has tapered off slightly. Sorry, profit margin. So as I said previously, that is indicating a moat, anything over 20%, according to the essays and philosophy of investing with Warren Buffett, anything over 20% is an indication of a company that has a durable competitive advantage. Now, if we continue on there, now short term, the past earnings growth has declined by 21% and the industry has declined by 23%.
So in that regard, there appears to be a trend currently and something to consider. Is it the case that now is a good time because the stock or the shares are distressed? That's something that I consider. Is it accelerating in growth? No, it's not in the short term. But again, it's this, it's this, how will I put it? If one can go against all of the analysts and believe in something that isn't measurable yet by analysts and so forth. So for instance, currently, it is unknown whether or not Google will be able to match other rivals in terms of artificial intelligence. How can they monetize that? Will it negatively impact on their cash cow, which is advertising and search? In my belief, and I believe, that that will happen, that Google will be able to succeed in that area and become market leader. Um, and in that instance, so far overall, I'm looking at all of the variables, it is indicating that I would like to purchase this stock. Now looking at return on equity, there we are again, 23% versus the industry of 6%. And return on assets, again, 15% versus the company of the industry of 5.5. Do you really need to know? Do you need to be an expert in all of these financial variables, return on equity, return on assets and so forth? No, you don't. All you need to really do in terms of this app is just see, is it green? If it is, is it substantially more than the actual industry? Yes, it is. Well, in that instance, then that's a good variable that's been passed. There we go again. And there we go. It's green. And that's the general outline of why I like this particular tool, Simply Wall Street. And in fact, I would state, hand on heart, that this tool has been the, the core reason why I have made some relatively good returns on investments. And again, here's another aspect of the Google stock that I like, the fact that it doesn't have any debt, 5% minimal. And if we go down here then to the dividend, it is no dividend at the moment. Um, so it's very much on a, a growth trajectory. And um, so continuing on then to management, and again management criteria again it's all green there so it seems to be quite good and again the ceo's compensation is quite good as well in comparison as you can see with green so again you don't need to be an expert all i need to do is just say okay it's green that's good i know he is and the next aspect then is to see, are there any insider dealings at the moment? Again, on the left hand side, insiders can sell stock for a whole host of reasons. But if you have persistently a number of insiders selling substantial amount of stock over a period of time, Overall, it's not a good indication. However, when shares are purchased by insiders, that only means one thing per se, that they believe the stock is going to rise. Now, it may be the case, again, based on my experience over the past couple of years, that you may have a new board of director or a new independent director appointed and I suppose to show confidence in their appointment they may purchase stock themselves that's only my own personal opinion 
There might be others that might disagree. But overall, if shares are stole, sold, it can be the fact that insiders are not confident for the future, or it can be a whole host of different other reasons, personal reasons or otherwise. If shares are bought, it's only for one reason, and that is the reason that the person purchasing it believes that the stock is going to rise for the future. So there we go, and I'm going down to institutions. Now, according to um, Peter Lynch, those stocks that have very little institutional investors are the ones to focus on. For me personally, I don't really utilize that um, strategy. I'm not looking for the multi-bagger per se, even though if they did come along, that would be fantastic. I'm looking for the boring, reliable, very minimal debt, nominal growth, and good value. So that is the end of this. So let me just go back again to um, the start of that. The wish list then is again another aspect of this that I like and all of the stocks that I have in my list, wish list they are they are sorted based on the, va the valuation so British American Tobacco is valued at 62 <laughs> excuse me and um, if we progress up then we can see the other aspects there, 56 for healthcare. Um, so it just gives me an overall outline of the stocks for companies. And if I wished to go in here then, and if I click here, if I want to look at markets, now without a shadow of a doubt, the United States is the de facto best market in the world. Um, standard S&P 500 is the, the de facto market. Um, so if I go down here, have a look. And as we can see, just to get an overall outline of the market, the average three-year market was 33. The PE was 33. And it's currently 27. Now, the PE of the past three years was negatively impacted by most, a lot of things, but most in particular, one could argue the pandemic and all of that excess amount of liquidity pumped into the, into, into economies and so forth. So the three-year comparison might be a slightly skewed and um, so again, it's saying here that the current PE of the market is that it's not going to grow as good as before. And um, another aspect that I like to look at is the various market sectors. So if I click on five years, one year, and as you can see, the ones that are in a distressed state are the ones lower down so let's have a look there so consumer discretion and we jump in there and the auto industry within that is the most negatively impacted in the fat in the past one one year um, and if i go down there top gainers amazon and so forth and then discovering this is another good aspect here in terms of discovering i've found some nice stocks here um again it's just a matter of browsing through seeing the stocks that you like and my one as i said is the boring but reliable my expertise is in computer science, but I do at times look into other markets. So for instance, the, um, the banking and insurance, 
would be another area. Coca Cola, things like that, natural beverages. Now, another one is Cisco. I like Cisco a lot. Boring but reliable, good dividend, very good value, very strong health, and persistently good returns, indicating another moat. So it's the same thing, it's basically that's how I do it. I just browse through, quickly look. If I see something I like, I take a note of it and purchase options there you and there and then. So that is the end of this relatively long video. 20 minutes and thank you for watching.